So I was working on my next project and then out of nowhere, my boy Sip over DMs me. Want to duo up with Sloime for one of the bits in my video? Me and my best friend Sloime being in a Sip over video? I'm down. So I was like, count me in dog. What's the video about? Well, the video is about two versus 15 redstoners where you and Sloime are the two pros and you face off against 15 other redstoners. And I thought, sounds good. I'm up to the challenge. And luckily Sloime was too. And by the way, it's this weekend and it only lasts 24 hours. This weekend? So I stopped working on this project for now and I immediately called Sloime. Me. Bro, what? Slimey, you got the invite from Sip over, right? Uh, yeah, I literally just told him I'm down if you're down. Dude, yeah, yeah, I'm down, I'm down. What do you want to make? If we wanted to win this competition, we needed something that was impressive, cool looking, engaging, and not too hard to make since we only had 24 hours. The impressive part, I'm sure we would satisfy no matter what we made. For looking cool, I'm also not worried. We'll just make sure that it has at least some decoration and it's not too messy. But for engaging, this is the most important part. Sipover was going to visit our build when we finish, so the more things there are for him to do, the better. The more ways he can interact with the build, and have fun, the more likely he is to give us more screen time. And we knew this as a fact because you might recognize Sloime from Sipover's Redstone competition video, where he literally won the competition and got more screen time. What did he build to win? Well, he built Hangman, which isn't the most complicated thing in the world, but it was so engaging and fun that it won the judges over. So if we want to have that same effect on the judges again, making our build engaging is super important. That means buttons, levers, keyboards, screens, basically as many interactive things as possible without going overboard. As the weekend grew closer, we could not decide what to make. We had some ideas, and they were mostly redstone games, which are cool, but since we only have 24 hours, we're kinda limited. I mean, we could probably make Tic-Tac-Toe, or Connect 4, Battleship, or any of those simple games in 24 hours. That wouldn't be a problem. But I mean, Sipover's seen those before. In fact, I think a lot of you guys have seen those before. These types of games are cool, and they're great for redstone projects, but through time they've been made again, and again, and again. If we wanted to make sure we win this competition, we needed something a little more unique. Wait, okay, I just made a line drawer like a few weeks ago. Uh, yeah. And you finished your image rotator thing from the other day, right? I did, yeah. So hear me out. What if we took both of those and maybe more and we combined them and made like a Microsoft Paint? That was it. That was our golden ticket, a paint program. It was perfect. It hasn't been done before. And even if it has, it's way less common than the normal games I mentioned. And it's super engaging. I mean, the whole point is to use a bunch of tools to paint something. So that's about as interactive as it gets. We immediately made a Google Doc to start planning what this redstone build was going to be capable of. We can use a normal lamp screen as the canvas, but how are they going to use it? You should probably have like tools, right? Like the actual Microsoft Paint tools. These are what the paint program was going to be made up of. The more tools, the more impressive it is. But we had to be careful of how many we plan to do because, you know, only 24 hours here. So after brainstorming and building prototypes to imagine how different tools would feel, we finally settled on these five tools. Brush tool, which draws any type of line anywhere on the screen. Line tool, which draws straight lines, well, as best as it can. Circle Circle tool, which draws circles, square tool, which draws squares, and a sprite tool, where the user can design a sprite and put it onto the canvas. Now that the plan was in place, it was time to start building it in single player to prepare for event day. The first tool to attack was the brush tool. I just finished the UI mm -hmm. if you want to see it. Uh, yeah, let me see. Ooh, that yeah. looks nice as frick. So, all right, for the brush tool, should we just do like a touchpad like this? Like, come here, boy. Yeah, I mean, that's probably fine. That's that's really slow with the observers, though. Uh, it, it do be. It's like the Moombo thing. What about tripwires? I'm thinking that they might be harder, but, like, it would probably be a lot better for latency. And he was right. Making a touchpad work with tripwire was a little bit harder, but it's so much cooler. I've seen Mumbo use a button panel in his version of paint, but the problem is the latency is really long, since every wire is a super long observer chain. So instead of a button panel, our plan was to use a giant platform of strings held together by tripwire hooks on all four sides. No matter where the player walks on it, you can get an output from the top and from the side, which is like your X coordinate and your Y coordinate. Originally, we were just going to have a setup like this, where the X and Y coordinates get encoded into a small binary number before being sent to the screen, but then we realized that's not going to work very well. All right, the encoders should be pretty much done. Probably just going to uh -huh. send them to the screen. I mean, they're just, they're just binary, right? The screen already accepts binary, so that's pretty easy. Yeah, it should, should work. 
Wait, actually, no, no, it's actually not gonna work. The problem was, the player can be on multiple points at the same time. In fact, up to four if they're in the middle of four blocks. And encoders can only accept one input at a time. So instead of encoding the information before sending it to the screen, the touchpad was gonna have to send all the X lines and all the Y lines to the screen, which was really annoying, but it was necessary. Plus, I mean, it looks cooler and more complicated to sip over, so it's not all bad. Should be hooked up. All right, nice. Do you want to be the first uh, tester? All right. Well, let's do like a smiley face. All right. We got all an eye. Right. Oh. oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It works. Uh, yes, let's go. Oh no my god. Way. Next up, the line tool. For this, the plan was to just copy my line drawer that I already made from this video right here. If you haven't seen that video, basically what this guy does is he takes two coordinate points as input in the form of binary numbers. For example, I could input 1, 7 and 20, 30. Then when you press run, it uses Bresenham's line drawing algorithm to output all the points of a straight line between those two coordinates. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty proud of this thing. You should go watch the multi-line render video if you want to learn more. So if we use this, sip over would just have to input two points, select the line tool, and boom, the line drawer would draw a nice straight line between the two points. I'm not sure if Sipover knows binary, so we might need to make a different input system, but that was the basic idea. But we weren't going to be able to use schematics on event day. I would have to build this whole thing by just looking at it on my second monitor. That did not sound fun, and even though we were going to have world edit, it still sounded really time consuming. But I mean, straight lines are pretty magical, so maybe it'll be worth it. Slash slash paste. All right, here's Mr. Line Drawer. Uh, I'm not going to connect it to the screen right now because I already know it works. Yeah, that's fine. I'll just put it off to the side for later. Next, we tackled the circle tool and the square tool. No, we didn't implement a circle algorithm and we didn't make any fancy circuits for squares either. The plan was actually just to have both the circles and squares stored in a ROM or read-only memory. That way, instead of using an algorithm for it to compute, it just loads the circles and squares right from memory. We also plan to have five different sizes of circles and five different sizes of squares. So for example, if the user wants to draw a circle of size three, the paint program literally just looks at its memory, which has all the sizes of circles. It grabs the circle that has has a size three and plops it onto the screen. All right, I'm gonna start making the circle and square ROM. Uh, no, it's, it's fine. I'll just generate the circles and squares with my program. Wait, you have a program? That's right, my guy Sloime coded a freaking Minecraft ROM generator in Python. It takes a bitmap as input, which is literally just an image of black and white pixels, and the output is that ROM. It literally just generates a schematic of barrels that match all the binary coordinates of those black pixels. That is literally so cool, and my man saved us so much time in making these ROMs. Last but not least, we wanted to make a sprite tool. The idea was the user could draw a sprite on a separate screen and place it onto the canvas. The mechanic to do this is the exact same mechanic I used in this serial image sender I made in my last video. But if you haven't seen that video, let me give you a quick explanation. To send an image or a sprite from one place to another, you have a sender and a receiver. The sender takes your image and converts it into one long binary string. For example, here I have a small face as my image, but the sender converts this to 101000111. And you can see that when I I press this button. The image gets released and the sender sends out 101000111. The receiver is designed to take in this binary string, lock it into place with repeater locks, and display the image that it received. And yeah, that's basically how we plan to make the sprite tool. A little mini screen for a sip over to design a sprite, and a button to place it onto the canvas. Once that was finished, we were all set with the tools. This was really coming together. I think sip over is gonna love it. Three hours before the event, we were kind of just sitting there, and I had an interesting idea. One more thing I was thinking that could probably like bring the paint to life, especially mm -hmm. for sip over, is like a, a thickness changer circuit. Thickness changer circuit, like explain a bit more. Yeah, you, you, you depend, no matter what tool you use, like it changes the size of the brush. If you put a thickness changer circuit right behind the screen, you could change the thickness of your circles, squares, lines, whatever you want. The only problem was making it because there was only three hours till the event, but that didn't stop us from trying. And with a half hour until the event, we finished it. A thickness changer circuit based on signal strength. 
Let me show you how this works. So if you want to draw normally, you just input a signal strength of one. And as you can see on the display, you just get that one pixel only. But if you input a higher signal strength, like a signal strength of three, you get a three by three pixel instead. And yeah, that concept works for any odd number signal strength. I can go over here and put a seven. And then over here, I can put a nine and maybe a five right here. And if we look at the screen, all the thicknesses have changed according to their signal strength. We have a nine by nine square, seven by seven, five by five, and a three by three. But now, what's ahead of us? behind us oh uh, i see him i see him my guy what is this what well, is written at the top right <laughs> a painting device bruh how all right let's paint some stuff we got a brush tool we got a circle tool and a sprite tool where you can even make your own sprite ah uh, i'm gonna go with the circle let's try out the circle all right so first. go ahead and slap that note block above the circle now you gotta choose a thickness Ooh, for your circle we're gonna draw that all right yes oh, oh my gosh bruh I didn't know it was going to be that big of a circle. I was trying to draw a dick. <laughs> Dude, how is that so good? It literally like went around. So you see there's a whole like drawing tablet at the bottom. No right? way you use that. And where you walk, it will basically Are draw on the screen. Oh, look at it go. Oh God, we went too far. Stop, stop. No. He's just got really big legs. Bro, this is actually nuts though. I want to do more with it, but we have to go. Yo, you guys won. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe. I've got big plans for the rest of this summer. And make sure to subscribe to Sloyme too. He's a redstone god and his content is really informative. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed. Peace out, guys.